What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you are ready to have some petty, insignificant pet peeves thrown at you today because that's what we're gonna do. What is country music? What's the sound we like again? Whether it's valid or not, I know that my reputation in a lot of corners of the country music industry is as someone that makes these broad, sweeping claims about the state of country music and I'm super harsh and this is not that video. Today's video is just gonna be about things that are slightly bothersome, things that are fairly insignificant, fairly petty, but they still get under our skin as country fans. Think of the pet peeves in this video as the metaphorical peanut butter spoon that your roommate left in your sink. You still love your roommate. In the grand scheme of life, this is not that big of a deal. It's not like he's not paying rent or something, but it's still just really annoying. It's kinda of hard to clean. If you're like me and hate peanut butter, it's kinda of gross. This is those level of problems. And for the record, why do people do that? Like, why don't you just either finish the peanut butter that's on the spoon or clean it and put it away? Or just never eat peanut butter? That's another option. I asked you guys on Reddit and on Instagram for some of your pet peeves, and I offered some of my own to get the ball rolling, and wow, there were a ton of responses. I like doing these sort of last week I asked yous, uh, Lawai, if you're a PewDiePie, or Jax Films fan. I know it's Jax Films thing, but I like the PewDiePie song, so let's listen to it. Leave your entries in the subreddit pros, and I'll watch submissions in the next episode of Lawai. My first pet peeve is about music videos, and it's the fact that I think 90% of them have a very similar style, which is a country artist in a warehouse or kind of standing off to the side of the scene or on a stage is singing their song while actors, usually two pretty young actors, act out what's happening in the music video. There's nothing inherently bad about this style, and I'm guessing it's done so you can limit the amount of time you actually need the star on set, and they don't have to be there for three days shooting, but it would be cool to see some country artists act in their videos or for them to have storylines that the singer is actually a part of. Mac on Instagram said, I completely agree with number one. That's why Midland has my favorite music videos of anyone in the country game right now. All their music videos tell a story rather than simply acting out the lyrics of the song. My next pet peeve is any variation of the lyric, doing what we do, or doing what she does, or doing that thing she does. Anything that just uses that phrase. I don't know how you do what you do. I find that the laziest lyric ever, and it drives me crazy. Like it doesn't actually describe anything. It gives you no sense of what's actually happening in the song. Oh, if she's doing what she always does. Did your mama teach you how to do that? I suppose you're supposed to assume she's in the shotgun seat, but like, what if she's a mime? Or when we're told, oh, we're doing what we always do. Just down here doing what we've always done. I guess we're supposed to assume you're drinking beers in a field, but like, how do I know you're not an amateur bobsled team? I just feel like it's such a throwaway line and that makes me sad. A bunch of you guys had specific pet peeves of lyrics too. Jeremy said, mine still has to be the widespread use of cane poles in country songs. We have graphite and fiberglass fishing rods these days. I fish my entire life and can't remember seeing a single person sitting with a cane pole on a bank. I posted that one and wow, the fishing community has a lot of opinions. And I know I'm the person that had to look up Zebco last year, so I'm not claiming to be an authority, but I just didn't know what a passionate niche this was. I will spare you all of the responses and just read one from Michael. It said, for me, the cane pole brings it back. If you haven't made your own cane rod one day or used a stick, can you say you're a real fisherman? There was also another fishing complaint from Pateman1216 that said, they always sing about bobbers dropping or sitting in the water, like use lures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the fishing ones make me so happy, but I guess it's just funny to think about all of the amateur technique being portrayed in country songs. My favorite lyric pet peeve though came from a guy named Nick Hernandez who says, maybe it's because it isn't a thing anyone I've ever known has done, but if you get this thing stuck and it's just you and your girl, ostensibly, is your truck just trapped there until you hike back and find someone with a winch? That's never been explained and it just appeared one day in popular country and it irks me. This cracked me up thinking about a hookup happening in a truck and then being like, well, we're stuck here. I guess your transmission can be stuck or you can be stuck in the mud, but yeah, like the aftermath, what do you just do if your truck is stuck? At some point, you're gonna have to get towed back into town. And then I started thinking about where I recognize that phrase from and definitely in Cruise, they say, Fire it up, let's go get this 
sing stuff. But also Mud on the Tires by Brad Paisley, where he says, And then with a little luck, we might just get stuck. But there's a bunch of songs that y'all mentioned that also reference getting stuck. We got Tim McGraw by Taylor Swift in that very first line. Ready, Set, Roll by Chase Rice. Next to You, Next to Me by Shenandoah. And then it's also mentioned again in Brad Paisley's 4WP. So I think getting stuck is kind of his kink. But hopefully all those people's tailgate hookups went well because yeah, it's going to be awkward whenever you got to get unstuck. Another really common pet peeve had to do with the location and settings of songs. And you can see it in MC comment on Reddit. 90% of songs are about Tennessee or Texas and maybe Georgia. I'm from Texas and I love it, but how come we never hear songs about North Carolina or Arkansas? Do we need to mention Nashville every five seconds? Pick somewhere else for once. Yeah, I agree that it's so fun to hear songs set in other places because they're so much more rare, which makes like Carolina by Eric Church. <laughs> That song, oh, headed out to Oklahoma. What's it called? Work Conquers All. Maybe it's called Oklahoma by American Aquarium. Just setting songs in different places makes them so much more interesting. A bunch of people had similar things to say. Josh said, I hate that there aren't any songs about the Pacific Northwest. We listen to country music and have dirt roads too. Whitworth 427 wrote a genuinely great rant about this in my Instagram DMs talking about how Washington State has the number one grain producing county in the country um, and how he's up there in Alaska working 120 hours a week in the most remote and country parts of the country. There's Wyoming and Idaho, but no, it's only the South that knows country. Sure, bud. <laughs> I appreciated the sass of that one. Yeah, maybe I propose that Buddy Jewel returns into the mainstream and makes a bunch of sequels to Sweet Southern Comfort. Carolina, or in Georgia, open arms are and just do like sweet Midwestern comfort or sweet PNW comfort or sweet Yankee comfort. You know, let's give all the states some country love. The next one is pretty random, and it's that I can't stand that in almost every single interview you ever see of Jordan Davis, he is asked an extensive number of questions about his beard. Now look, I know that Jordan Davis has an impressive beard. I too used to rock a big beard with the flared out mustache. I had my own freaking beard oil fledgling little company, and if you are an OG to the channel, you might actually remember that. But almost every single interview seems to begin with an awkward and inevitable series of questions about out. You know, do you uh, do, do you put beard oil in that thing? What's your beard grooming routine? Because so, you have an amazing beard. Do you do the oils you. and stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Beard shampoo. And how do you trim it? Do you have like a form that you put it I on? Have, to, like, I make just it try to. <laughs> or you just eyeball it? <laughs> I, I should should make that. Yeah, like right? A, like yeah, flip it on and then shave. Idea. And spoiler alert, anyone with a giant beard probably has a hair dryer in their grooming regimen and not everyone wants to talk about that. You know, I can't say for sure if Jordan Davis does, but that's a little trick of the trade. But I feel like it's kind of objectifying and certainly is reductive to just be asked this over and over and over again. Can I pull your beard? Let me yeah, just... man, go ahead. It's real. <laughs> I got a long way to go, don't I? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're yeah. coming in though, man. I like it, well, I like touch it. touch beards. Maybe mine will grow if we touch. Come on, touch beards. That's how we do a little, little, little turf builder. Come on, touch, size just of... touch, no. just touch it. Come on. Just touch it. No, you with your beard. Oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> That's too close. Hey, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Best Good of luck. See. Much success. Thank Even you. if it's a pop country artist, ask about their freaking music or what inspires them or their soul or something, but... That kind of like small talk, I find it awkward and I don't know, that, that just bothers me. As someone that used to rock a big beard, I think I'm projecting on this one. But hey, these are about petty pet peeves. But yeah, it gets annoying to answer those questions all the time. My next pet peeve is about music video premieres and it's two tiered. First off, I can't stand when new major label artists are given these glossy countdowns that go on their social media before they really have a following that's trying to build anticipation for an artist that no one is really anticipating yet, that's no shade to them. It just looks really desperate and weird to give a new artist the same kind of rollout treatment that you'd give Marin Morris or Kane Brown or some huge star. But what really gets me is that when artists finally do release the video, when those countdowns end and they do a premiere with some news outlet, which are set up by publicity and marketing teams in order to get some ink spilled about their artist in big publications, often they are these unlisted YouTube videos and you click through to the video at the end of a premiere day and you're like, 
wow, that got, you know, a couple hundred views. It doesn't feel very worth it to me. And frankly, from a YouTube standpoint, it doesn't feel like that would be very good for the algorithm because a lot of your most passionate fans, then when you make the video public the next day, aren't going to be tuning in, which means it's not gonna tell YouTube that there's much interest in this video. But moreover, it just doesn't feel very fan first. It feels like it's putting the industry and the media ahead of your fans that you could be directly connected to. I remember when I used to work in the magazine industry, Fun, the band that no longer exists anymore, they had put out their song, We Are Young, then they had put out their song, Some Nights, and they were huge. And then they did a premiere of their music video for Carry On. And at that time, we had an, an exclusive player. And I was like, what are they doing? They have this passionate fan base, and they're premiering it on a website instead of just giving it directly to their fans. I just don't really get it. It's clear to me that a lot of people feel that same disconnect on social media. On Reddit, you had Illini person that said, one pet peeve for me is just how generally bad it seems country musicians are at social media. Browsing different Instagrams, almost all the biggest names in countries, profiles are just full of boring self-promotions for their music and merch, nothing interesting. One exception would be Co Wetzel, who has a hilarious and interesting Insta, but obviously is nowhere near mainstream and largely unheard of. He's getting there though. RZM7 on Reddit commented more generally on country music culture and said how shitty our social media presence is. There are hip hop culture accounts with millions of followers. In the country world, it's pretty much just you, that's kind, and Whiskey Riff. Pretty much every other country music account feels like it's run by some Nashville mom. I would push back on this a little. I love, I feel like there's, we're getting there. I feel like things are a Bruin. Like you go on Instagram, there are some funny meme accounts that are starting and at least to me, it feels like there is a rise in good user-generated content. There were a lot of pet peeves about the design choices of album covers. I won't include all of them. David was the first to respond and said they all use the same fonts, LOL. Other people mentioned the kind of all caps sans serif font, and I actually thought that was super common, and I'd feel better hating on it if my videos didn't all have an all caps sans serif font in the thumbnails. There was one person that really despises the circular logos that have a initials in them that so many bands use and there are so many of these and I think they do it because it's easy to put on a hat but I appreciated how triggering that is and then fire inside 91 on reddit just can't stand the bad design on merch um, and on album covers as well at the end of their message said designers please reach out and help these poor folks they need it much like I learned with fishermen earlier in the video I feel like graphic design nerds are another niche that I didn't realize was so passionate. I will say when it comes to boring album covers that are just a portrait of an artist, I think sometimes those are really nice, especially for newer artists. And there's a marketing side of me that just remembers from the magazine world that if you did a super creative cover, it generally would not sell as well as just a cover of a smiling, you know, Cameron Diaz or someone against a white background with text around them. Annoying as that is, that kind of works for people sometimes. And the last one comes from Fender Bender on Reddit that said, the obsession with having a single go number one, which is probably the reason for these absurdly long single lifetimes. There's way too many songs that no one would even know went to number one in the past few years. And likewise, there's plenty of songs throughout history that never went number one and are iconic for the artist. I totally agree. And that's maybe like a bigger issue than a pet peeve, but I hate the fact that there are these giant 60 plus week climbs for songs at radio because a lot of labels are obsessed with achieving that number one status and meanwhile you only get like one maybe two singles from an album era and then it just kind of dies it feels so boring it doesn't feel fan first it feels like it is trying to reward the system before it's trying to feed the fans and yeah, there's so many iconic songs that weren't big number one hits, but you can't tell me that something like Feathered Indians by Tyler Childers, which wasn't even on country radio, or let's just like take something that wasn't even a big hit, Girl Going Nowhere by Ashley McBride. I bet you anything that that has had way more impact and done more for her career than half the songs that have gone number one in the last few years. There were a bunch of other responses, but I wouldn't really say they were the kind of low level petty pet peeves that we were looking for in this video. A lot of sort of systemic issues about corporate radio structures or the fact that Nashville can be really closed off to Texas and red dirt artists. These are all interesting things to point out, but I wanted to keep this video 
pretty chill. So that's it for today's video. Just something simple. It's fun to hear from you guys and hear what your opinions about the industry are because Lord knows I hear myself talk enough. So let me know if you have any other pet peeves in the comments down below. And thanks for playing along in today's edition of the Why. So I'll see y'all later. See y'all next week with more country music stuff. Bye. Thank you.